All right, welcome back. So next I'm gonna break down a couple of poses. At the same time, work through my process and kind of talk about, very briefly talk about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it, why I work the way that I do, and how in the end it doesn't matter how I work, as long as the animation looks good, we're all good, we're all golden. Because really that's all that matters in the end. And I'll also look at a couple of, or an image from the animator survival kit, which every animator should have, and take, just take a look at how Richard Williams discusses or, or outlines the, what goes into a run cycle, just a very generic run cycle. Okay. And all right, let's go. So looking at the, this image from animator survival kit, the basic poses according to Richard Williams, that make up a run. You have your extreme, you're down. I consider this passion, passing slash push off, uh, the suspension, and back to back again. Really, the only ones I'm going to be concerned with is the passing, suspension, contact, and passing push off contact and basically both of these together. I'm going to have either, I'm going to choose some sort of in between that so I can really uh, focus on squashing the character down as much as possible. It's kind of, you know, the further, th the further you squash and then move into a stretch, the more weight it's going to appear to, for the character to have, depending upon how we space it out and the timing of it. The less you squash in the run, the more light it's going to feel. And of course, this is all going to relate to the timing and spacing of the, the poses as well. But the main thing is I'm pointing out is from my perspective, the main points in a run are the push off, the suspension, the contact, and the passing. And to kind of break it out, push, suspension, contact, passing. While for me, this is what makes up the run, this is just the beginning. This is just a starting point. It's kind of like animating a, a when you're learning to animate a quad, a quadruped. There's so much that goes into the quadruped. So much. What to in order to get past that first that initial, oh my god, there's more than two legs. It's so confusing. You can break it down like this. If you look at the front as in as in contact, and then the back part of the dog or dog, back part of the quadruped in passing. And then as it moves into contact, the front moves into passing. So essentially, for the front on the quad, left foot forward, right foot back for contact. The back is left foot on the ground in passing, right foot in the air in passing. And then as it moves into contact, the front moves into passing and so on. Do that and it'll help break down the quadruped. And the same thing we're doing with the run. We're just breaking it down to the minimal amount of poses that helps us then understand how to build on top of that. So I already started to work through work through a couple of poses here. And so as we've already seen with the pose tool, the mirroring pose. Take that back and push this off to the side for now. Another way. Obviously we can mirror poses. So right now I'm just working through the just trying to find a couple of the poses that I like within this this uh, this extreme run that we have here, or sprint rather. And while I'm doing this spaced out, I typically like to work on odds. So I'll just concern myself with the spacing of the character, not the timing just yet. So I'll animate on odds. I would animate. I would put this down to five and keep going with it. Part of the reason why that is. Is let's say these are, this is the pose I choose for three. Well, the pose between one and three on two is an exact in between, and it at least gives me a starting point if I'm working in linear to, to, uh, to build the breakdown and then go from there. But that aside, it doesn't matter. I'm just, just kind of pointing that out. And also, I, I use S, hit auto key. I don't care about how dirty, dirty my tangents are, I'll worry about polishing them up later. I'm not worried about going into gimbal lock or anything like that. The Euler, fil the Euler filter is amazing for that. Okay, so we have our suspension. Do 
So let's go ahead and do. So right now I'm trying to see like how far ahead of him does he stretch out his leg? It's pretty far. The reason why I'm looking at that is because if I pull up a my reference. Look at how he runs. You notice that when he puts his, when he moves from the pushing position into the suspension, when he puts his leg out in front of him, for one, he doesn't straighten it that much, and he doesn't put it out that far in front of him. He doesn't straighten it out that far in front of him, in front of him at all. It's here, and whereas the the other guy is really putting his foot out like that. He is just putting his foot down right there. This might be too much, but we'll see. Not entirely concerned with the upper body right this minute. If I got to hide it, I would. Because what I want to do now is just go ahead and key everything, and I'm going to move into the down position just to get this intact. Or the down passing, whatever. In this case. For now, and I'm sure this will change at some point, but for now, in order to get all of your poses mirrored to the other side, you have to do an individual. And if I'm wrong about this, if there's some other way of working through this, please somebody leave me a comment because I can't seem to figure it out if that's not the case. But for the moment, I have to go to each of the poses, each of the key poses, and save a selection. Suspension, which is good to have anyway, especially if you name it wrong. Suspension, suppose, go to this one, over here, Let's say load near pose. Move near pose. Move near pose. Let's push this up to seventeen. Right, that first frame. Middle nose drag. Arm side. Yeah. So if you ignore the top part, we've got the basic beginnings of a run cycle. Of course, because the top part hasn't been touched at all, it's very like, ding, 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 coming to get ya, coming to get ya, gotta drink my blood, gotta drink my blood. Alright, so in the next video we're going to get into the polish stage. And well, it's polished as far as the lower half is concerned. I still need to animate the top and animate the torso and then the arms and the head and just start to work all of that stuff out. And as I do that, um, 
it's going to influence the hips as much as the hips influence the chest because there might be adjustments. Well, there will be adjustments that I need to make on the chest, the arms, and that's going to allow, well, you have to be, you have to be open to changes. You can't get too locked down in the blocking process, but that's what we'll do with next. As far as interval four is concerned, if you don't have it, get it. It's cheap, 20 bucks a month. If you do have it, congratulations. You have the most amazing engine ever created, as far as off the shelf is concerned. So two of the most important tutorials that I found are the animation and rigging tools. It goes through the entire process. The animation and rigging tools that I've already run through as far as like kind of what it is, it goes into more depth or goes more in depth with it. Also, they have the blueprint third person uh, game creation. This thing goes over the entire process of getting your character in the engine, setting up the character within the and within Unreal, uh, creating a, a, a simple animation blueprint with a state machine that allows you to have an idle walk and run and jump, jump start, jump idle, and jump end, going right back to idle again. It showed you how to create the blend between the idle walk and run, as well as a whole other host of things. Get it, download it, become familiar with it, enjoy it, make your own games, go forth and create. But anyway, that aside, we'll go ahead and start the next video, polish this, run, and just get this going in the engine. See you on the other side.